He promises that schools will identify children who need help and provide targeted support when needed, which any teacher will tell you they, they already do. Uh, but isn't there a bigger question about whether our education system is even equipping children with the skills required in a 21st century world? Right, Lee, I might come to you first because you spend your days teaching predominantly. How much of your week is teaching? Oh, about 40% of my time. OK. When the students arrive at you, your university level, yeah. are, do they have the skills necessary, do you think, to A, do the academic rigorous work they have to do with you, but also to go into life? Because life isn't just about getting A's in your maths and English, is it? I'm afraid they don't. I mean, what I have seen in my time teaching at university, I've been teaching at my current university about 13 years. The very first thing I was asked to do when I started was to devise a first year module designed to help students make the transition to university because we were finding that there was a bigger and bigger gap between what they were doing at school and what we were trying to do with them at university. Well, that is so depressing. And that problem has only worsened in the years <gasps> since. So what don't they have? What are they not equipped <clears throat> to deal with? What are you having to fill in the gaps for? Essentially, uh, secondary education in this country in particular has become an exam factory. Yeah. Because universities are set... Uh, sorry, schools are set targets and they're measured in league tables for how well they perform. All of the incentives drive teachers to teaching to the test. So everything else gets pushed off the curriculum, and the students are trained in how to jump through the hoops required to get, um, to get a good mark. They're but not trained in the skills of critical thinking, right. making an argument, independent research. They must be guided, and so they need hand-holding constantly all the way through the process. My word. Scarlett, is, how, what's your reaction to that? Your children are grown up now. They're in their 30s. I've still got three who are at high school age, uh, one primary school, actually. Lab uh, Tony Blair, education, 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 right? That was his legacy. Are we, is this the result of that 20, 22 yeah, years mean, later? I mean, I know because because my children were, were at secondary school, at London secondary schools, which really improved during Tony Blair's day and actually came out, went to university and did really well. Actually, I mean, so there is, there's, there's been a problem for a long time. Um, I mean, one, one would think actually that this was a new government. Actually, the, the Tories have been, have been in power since 20, uh, since, uh, for 12 years. But much more. I mean, look at what the pandemic did. I mean, you know, it was nearly a year ago that Sir Kevin Collins said, we need this much money to, to, to catch up, right? And Rishi Sunak said, absolutely not. You can have 10%. And he resigned. I mean, we, it, it is a disaster mm. at the moment. And, and, and so all this, we're going to target these children. I mean, there are children, I mean, I completely agree with you about exam factories, but I do think there are lots and lots of children who are never going to get near your university. Mm. I mean, who really need help, who, who didn't go to school during the pandemic, weren't helped during the pandemic, didn't have laptops as they were promised during the pandemic. Nothing happened. And now they're just, they're, they're, and now we hear, oh yeah, everybody's got to have maths and English. This isn't, this, this, this just isn't true. I mean, that's what is, we're being promised things that actually should have been delivered year after year after year.